Hey guys, it's Sandro here, and welcome to part 2 of the detail on this Porsche 944 Carrera GT. In part 1, we went through the whole decontamination stage to prepare the car for paint correction, as well as discussing the owner's goals and then inspecting, measuring and masking the paint. So I'm just going to jump straight into part 2 by doing a test section, starting with a very gentle combination in the form of the ShineMate red finishing foam pad with CarPro Reflect Fine Polish using the X605 polisher, which is also a smaller throw DA polisher that tends to be a little less aggressive and have an increased finishing ability compared to larger 15 and 21mm throw DA polishers. Now although I wouldn't expect this very mild combination to be successful, as the existing defects are quite prominent, I am expecting this paint to be quite a soft and sensitive one based on previous experience with working on older single stage Porsches. So this should still be a good starting point to gather some great information about this paint. I'm using a slow to moderate arm movement, moderate pressure and I'm on speed 5 of the polisher doing about 3 to 4 row passes in a half meter square section which is also a general technique that I like to start with. Having a look at this first test section, I'd say that it's removed most of the lighter swirls with success. And the finish is also reasonably good, but still has a touch of haze which further goes to indicate that it's a sensitive paint, being that CarPro, Reflect Polish and the Shime Pad are such a fine and well finishing combination. But it's also clear to see that a good 50% of the more moderate to deeper scratches are still remaining, so a combination with increased cutting is definitely still needed. For a second combination, I stepped up to the Blue Shine Mate Intermediate Foam Pad, as well as stepped up to CarPro's Medium Compound Fixer. Now if I was relatively close to removing all the defects, I could have just tried stepping up my pad or even just my compound. But seeing that I'm not exactly close to removing the defects, I really need a jump in both pad and compound aggression to achieve a more significant defect removal. But in saying that, this is still quite a mild combination relative to the options available. Having a look at the results in this second test section, I can clearly see a much better leveling ability with a good 75-80% to defect removal. So it's really been able to once again remove all the lighter swirls but also all the moderate ones, though the slightly deeper defects are still remaining. But in relation to gloss and saturation levels, it's also definitely a step down with some increased haze and micro marring in the finish compared to the first combination. Now on many medium to harder paints, this combination can finish perfectly, especially with the EX605 Shimei Polisher. So for me to see this relatively poor finish on this paint, confirms without a doubt that it is a rather soft and sensitive one. And you guys should also be able to see the red single stage paint residue quite clearly on this blue pad. For a third test section, I once again stepped up both my pad and compound combination to the yellow light cutting Shimei pad and CarPro clear cut. Now what I'm searching for here is at least 95% defect removal, as that's the general point where you do start to pursue a higher result, and that's what the client is after. 
and that last 10 to 25 percent of the existing defects are always far more difficult to remove than the first 75 percent which generally don't require anything too aggressive by comparison. So although I'm getting closer to my goal, previous experience tells me that I still need a more significant amount of cut to achieve that. And once again, although this is definitely a more aggressive combination than the previous two, it's still what I'd consider to be a light cutting combination. Having a look at the results in this third test section, I'd say that I can see a good 90 to 95% defect removal which is within the realm of what I'm looking for, but just on the edge. However, what I'm a little more concerned about is the dramatically increased haze and compounding marring that looks as though it will be a lot of work to refine, as well as some slightly patchy areas where it looks as though the paint has been overly hazed. So although I'm close to being happy with the defect leveling ability of this combination, I'm really not too happy with the finish, as I feel it may possibly take two steps to refine it which is just going to blow out the time that I have available for this job. For a fourth combination, I stuck with CarPro ClearCut as I felt it was giving me just enough cut to remove the defects without removing too much paint, but this time tried it on the Lake Country Blue SDO foam pad. All in all, this pad is give or take at the same level of the previous yellow Shimei pad, but whereas the Shimei pad relies on a slightly more abrasive pad surface to achieve its cut, this pad relies on a slightly stiffer foam to achieve it. As such, it can produce almost identical amounts of cut, but with a slightly better finish, that is, if your technique is on point. Now having a look at this fourth test section, I can immediately see that it's finished much better, though there still is an obvious haze that will need to be further refined. And in relation to cut, it's also quite similar to the previous section, once again falling into that borderline 90 to 95% defect removal. The finish is also much more consistent, meaning that the compound is breaking down more uniformly. So all in all, it's actually looking quite good as an overall option, as I'm achieving the minimum amount of cut that's acceptable, which means it's going to help me preserve the maximum amount of paint, which is also my goal, and the finish looks as though it wouldn't be too much work to refine. Now although it's extremely rare for me to use a microfiber pad on a soft paint, as it's almost never been a successful outcome, I have been getting some great results with the New Lake Country microfiber polishing pads, which are a step down in aggression compared to their microfiber cutting pads. And although I was still extremely skeptical about it working well, I have been pleasantly surprised in many cases with certain combinations that I never would have initially guessed to work. I'll also add that one reason I like CarPro Clear Cut on softer paints is that it's a fast cycle compound which means that I don't have to overly work it on the paint as it breaks down amazingly quick and does what it needs to do faster than most compounds. And one piece of advice I can give you about soft paints is not to overwork them or create too much heat as they will become near impossible to refine and end up looking like a hazed up mess. Now, not as I'd hoped, but more as I predicted, the microfiber pad was a complete disaster on this soft and sensitive paint. But I also think that from a sharing perspective, it's easier for me to show you guys why microfiber pads and soft paints don't tend to mix well. The haze in the finish is just off the scale, as is the patchy and inconsistent finish, which is more or less the paint speaking to you and saying, I don't like this at all. A large part of it is the heat, which is just difficult to minimize with microfiber pads, even in a short polishing cycle with clear cut and minimal pressure. It also makes wiping off the residue near impossible, as it tends to strongly fuse back onto the paint. So although microfiber pads can be absolutely amazing on mid to hard paints, they just don't tend to work on soft and sensitive paints all that well, at least in my experience. For a sixth test section, I decided to try the Lake Country purple foamed wall pad, yet again with the same compound. Now compared to the previous Lake Country microfiber polishing pad, this would be a step down in aggression. And unlike many more aggressive wall pads, this one actually tends to finish quite well and is actually a pad that I've used quite a lot for single stage corrections. Though to be honest, it's once again been more successful on mid to hard paints. Now overall, although its finish isn't all that great on this paint compared to the previous foam pads, it's still miles better than the previous microfiber pad. 
and whereas I couldn't even gauge the cutting ability of the microfiber pad because there was just so much haze and patchiness in the finish, I can actually see that this pad has removed almost all the defects quite successfully. Now, if I wasn't too concerned with preserving as much paint as possible, and I had a little more time to refine the finish, then this could potentially be a better option than using any of the previous foam pads. But as it stands, I don't want to remove as much paint as I feel this pad will, and I also don't have that extra time to spend doing a couple of stages to refine the finish, which I'm guessing it's going to need. So all in all, as it stands, my fourth test section using the Lake Country Blue SDO foam pad with CarPro ClearCut is going to be the best balance of defect removal versus paint preservation versus time needed to refine the finish. I'll additionally add that you'll see some slight pitting that looks like tiny pinhole dents covering the paint. I've talked about this defect at length in quite a few previous videos, but it seems to mostly affect car bonnets or even the other top flat panels of a car to a lesser extent. And these defects also seem to affect or at least be present in red paints more than any other colour, which may be partly due to the red pigment, which also seems to be more affected by UV light and oxidation compared to all other colours. Now overall, you can actually remove these defects, or at least largely reduce them, by leveling down the paint using more aggressive compounds and pads. But you're obviously going to have to remove a lot more paint to do so, which I'm not going to be doing here, but it's a choice that you can make depending on you or your client's goals. So with my first cutting stage combination sorted, I now had to find a second finishing combination to restore maximum gloss and clarity to this paint. Now going back to my very first test section using CarPro Reflect, although it did finish quite well and could still be a possibility, I could still see a little haze. So I decided to try Shoal Concepts S30 Plus as a comparison and also decided to try it on two pads to further compare the results using the Lake Country Orange and Black SDO foam pads. Now having a look at these two test sections, they are both fairly good, being able to eliminate almost all of the haze in a quick and effective second polishing stage. But whereas I can still see a tiny bit of haze in the section with the softer black pad, I can hardly see any haze and increased gloss and clarity in the section with the orange pad, which was also a little better than the original first test section with the red Shime pad and CarPro Reflect polish. Now, I actually did a couple more test sections off camera as I was a little behind and needed to speed things up. But all in all, the section with S30 on the orange pad still turned out to be the best by far.
So with all of that sorted, it was time to get down to business and get the paint corrected, starting by finishing off the bonnet. Now as like country, unfortunately, don't make 2 inch or 1 inch versions of their SDO or HDO foam pads, I used a selection of the Ripper's green, yellow and white mini foam pads for my smaller polishes depending on the section I was working on and what it required. Now as a general working method, I do tend to use my smaller 3 inch, 2 inch and 1 inch pads and machines to start with. By doing all the edge work, which involves getting close to the panel edges, seams and creases, and work in much smaller sections as it's very time consuming and more delicate work. So it's something I like to get out of the way first. Which is then followed by the flat work with my larger 5 inch polisher. And that's more of the home stretch of paint correction for me as it's less stressful and much quicker working larger areas with less obstacles. But in all honesty it really does matter what you do first. What does matter if you do want to achieve a high end result and still preserve as much of the paint as possible is that you stay methodical with your process, meaning you stay consistent with your working method as much as possible, but also know when to adapt and switch up your method, products and techniques if something just isn't working as you progress. So all in all, it's about being aware and checking your work. So with the bonnet completed, hopefully you guys can see that it's quite a dramatic improvement compared to what it was like to begin with. A good 95% of the existing swirls and scratches were removed, 
along with some light oxidation and previous buffer holograms, while still improving the gloss and clarity levels in the overall finish. Now, as I mentioned, if this job called for it, I could have more aggressively leveled down the paint to eliminate even more of the deeper scratches and those tiny pinhole defects. But considering all of the options available, I think preserving as much of this paint was without a doubt the right call to make. Now as I continue to correct the paint, I'll just talk a little about some of the challenges of this job. Throughout this whole correction process, I was constantly switching up and switching out my pads at a much faster rate than normal. In fact, I'll say that between switching to new pads and rewashing pads throughout, I probably used upwards of 30 clean pads during this entire process. The main difference with working on softer paints is that the material or paint removal is quite rapid compared to harder paints. As such, your pads will become overloaded with compound and paint residue at a much faster rate. And what tends to happen if you don't cycle through or switch out your pads constantly is that they quickly start to underperform both in their cutting and finishing abilities, as all that residue clogs up the pad cells. And although I blow out my pads after every single set of passes, which massively helps combat that, they're still going to eventually become overloaded, which happens much quicker on softer, and in particular, single stage paints. Another particular challenge with this car was all the various metal, plastic, and fiber based substrates or panels, as almost every other panel on this car seemed to be made of a different material. Polishing paint on steel or even aluminium panels is quite different to polishing paint applied to plastic or fiber based panels. Metal tends to be more rigid with less flex and also tends to disperse heat much more effectively and cool down after polishing much more efficiently. So what this tends to mean from a paint correction perspective is that you're able to transfer the cutting power of your machine much better to remove existing defects on more rigid metal panels and you're also able to generally finish better with the reduced heat and better heat distribution as increased heat is one main factor that contributes to haze and marring in the finish making it quite difficult to polish paint with good gloss and clarity levels. Whereas plastics and many fiber based materials tend to have more flex which makes them harder to effectively transfer that cutting ability of your pad and compound to the surface so it tends to be harder to remove defects while their reduced ability to conduct and disperse heat also makes it more difficult to finish well, in many cases hazing up due to increased heat that continuously builds in one spot. So all in all, at least in my experience, it's more difficult to correct plastic and fiber based substrates compared to metal ones. And apart from some slight adjustments that you may need to make to your combination of compound pad and machine, you may also need to adjust your technique to match the type of material that you're polishing on. After correcting most of the car's top panels, I lifted the car up to have a better look at the rims. Now I was sure without a doubt that these rims had factory original paint, and although the paint was intact for the most part, it was also quite oxidized and hazed over. Now as I mentioned in part 1 of this series, 
The owner wasn't interested in correcting or coating the rims, glass, trims, or really anything apart from the actual exterior red paint. But as I also mentioned, if time allows, I do like to do as much as I can to get the vehicle looking its best. After a closer inspection, a measurement of the paint on the rims where I was getting readings of 10 to 20 microns, which is extremely thin, it immediately put polishing the rims off the table as there simply wasn't enough paint to make it an option. But it also made it quite clear to me that these rims need a decent coating or protection in place if the paint's going to survive on them. The other great benefit of a quality ceramic coating is that it should have a great filling ability compared to most waxes or sealants because it will lay down a thicker layer and should largely help mask that haze and restore some richness and gloss to their finish. And the best thing I could do is try and add a few more microns of thickness to these rims in the form of a couple of layers of the coating to also stop the oxidation in the future. After I was done, I was actually surprised at how much a couple of layers of the coating did to restore them, which was quite amazing and more than I would have guessed. And you'll also see with the final shots of the car in part 3, that the wheel coating looked just as good once it was fully cured. The wheels were then given time to partially cure before putting on some wheel covers to protect them during the remainder of the paint correction process. As I already had the car lifted up on the hoist from the previous day of coating the wheels, I decided to continue the correction process on the lower panels of the car. Now for the most part, these were all plastic and fibre based trims and panels. And I'll be honest in saying that they turned out to be a lot more work to correct than I thought. So in a way, I was glad to get them done a little earlier on, as they did turn out to take a lot more time than I initially estimated. Now it's obviously a big advantage having a car hoist to work on those lower panels, which just a few years ago I never had, so I'm really thankful for it, as it also allows you to see certain defects that are hard to spot when the car is down. But it's kind of a double-edged sword in a way, as it's great to get all the information about the paint's condition more clearly. But it also means that once you see it all and can access it all, there's a lot more work than you initially guessed or predicted. So in a way, it's something you need to allow for and equate into a quote if you do intend on pursuing that level of work.
Now I don't think there's too much to add as most of the remaining footage is fairly self-explanatory and I've probably already talked way too much during this video. So I'll try and wrap up the talking here with a few last points and then leave you guys with the rest of the footage. One area of the paint correction process that turned out to be a bigger struggle than I expected was finishing this paint with perfect gloss and clarity levels. In fact, once I finished correcting the car, or at least thought I was finished, I actually went back the next day and ended up buying some brand new polishing pads and spent several more hours refining the paint even further, which those brand new pads really helped to eliminate some of the lingering haze that was extremely difficult to entirely remove. So another tip I can offer is that a brand new polishing or finishing pad will help out on these soft and sensitive paints. It's not always easy to communicate all the obstacles or even triumphs that happen day to day during any long or involved detailing job as it's always full of ups and downs. And it's an entirely different proposition trying to document it and have it all translate well into a video which is still a constant battle trying to both detail a car and film the whole process as best as I can, as time can be a hard thing to manage. But I don't want to sound like I'm moaning and groaning about this job, because I honestly love what I do as well as making this sort of content. I just want to try and be more honest in explaining that certain cars and paints pose some real challenges. And I don't care how long you've been detailing or how good you think you are, no one has it all worked out and there's always hurdles that can bring you down. But the best thing you can do is pick yourself up, try and learn from those mistakes, and just keep on going. I hope you guys stay tuned for the third and final chapter of this Porsche 944 Carrera GT detail, in which I'll be coding the car and showing you the final finished shots. As always, I really hope you guys enjoyed and found this video useful. Please share this video, like, comment, and subscribe to this channel to show your support for this content and I'll see you guys soon.
dust of moss and the taste of loss. Gray coast home, the mountains rose have left. While a child, he goes lost in time. The visions like waves. Tattoos on your soul.